everybody. I am so excited with this new interview today with Emma. So Emma um, is an adult learner who did functional skills level two with our amazing um, Caroline. And uh, Emma is going to tell us a bit more about herself because she has an amazing story to share with you. And I hope it is going to um, encourage you and inspire you. So Emma, tell us a bit more about what happened to you? Something incredible happened to you. Okay, so five years ago, I had an accident. Um, I went to bed like any other night and in the night I got up sleepwalking and I had a fall. Um, there was nobody home at the time, so I was basically on the floor for two days in a coma. Uh, when I was eventually found, um, I got taken to hospital and it was found that I had a broken neck, a huge fracture in my skull and several brain hemorrhages. Um, at the t I don't remember any of this because obviously I was pretty much out of it, but um, I spent, spent a long time trying to recover from this and... Um, I had to learn to do everything all over again, speaking, feeding myself, washing myself. I was basically a, a toddler in an adult's body. So I had, um, I actually met my partner. He also has a brain injury and we met because of our brain injuries. Wow. So um, that was how I moved to Bristol, basically, because um, I was living in Hampshire. And um, to cut a long story short, I sort of, once I'd got my speech back and could behave myself properly because my behaviour was a bit feral, a bit wild um, in the early days because I just didn't know how to behave. But um, once I'd got sort of some of my faculties back, I sort of thought about relearning some of the skills I'd lost because I was struggling with things like counting money. I didn't recognise money anymore. Um, so I sort of practised those things at home with my support worker. And then when the right time came, which was two years ago, um, I started um, doing functional skills in maths and English. Um, it, for the last year, I've been at um, Filton College doing my level two with Carolyn, who's absolutely amazing at her job. Um, just literally giving me so much confidence. I love maths. I used to hate maths. Um, my brain injury has actually made me be better at maths. Wow! I'm just very logical now. I wouldn't recommend right. it. Don't don't do that to get better at maths. Um, but yeah, so uh, I actually have a love for maths now. I really enjoy it. Um, but it's also being in this environment where you're able to learn at your own speed. You're not un put under any pressure. Um, it's very nurturing and I found very quickly that my confidence built up to the point where I was looking further ahead at what my future aspirations were. At the time of my accident, I'd got a place at university to study physiotherapy, but obviously that all just came to an abrupt halt when I had my accident. Um, and I'd sort of not quite given up on it, it was in the back of my mind, but then um, more recently, I literally, Karen had given me the confidence to take that leap and thought, I thought, I'm just going to apply. They'll probably say no, because I walk with a walking wow. stick. I do have some deficits. Um, class, I am mean, classed as disabled. I prefer differently abled than disabled, because I am able to do lots of things. Absolutely. Um, and I got, my pla I got my place. That at university. So I start in September to study oh my... physiotherapy. Wow. So yeah. That is my story. So the future is bright then for you? Yes, I can't wait. So what would you say to um, people who think that maybe, you know, if they go through an accident or things are not going their way, you know, and something, you know, bad happening mm -hmm. in their lives, how could you encourage them to say that, you know, basically there, there, there is hope? Just never give up. If you've got any goals, like big or small, never give up work really small start really small with little goals that you know you can definitely achieve and even if like you don't achieve your massive long-term goal 
sometimes the journey is like just as good as the destination. Also give yourself time. That is the one thing I was trying to hurry my recovery. Right. You can't do that. Um, yeah, just give yourself time really. Look into ways to reduce like stress and things like that because that affects like your recovery and your thinking even. But um, no matter, I think no matter what could be wrong with you, even if you've just, even if you've been through something major in your life, like a life event or a family member. But yeah, that would be my advice. advice. Fantastic. And any tips on how to approach the course and just do well, you know, one passing mm-hmm. by exam? Because I think you had 44, 45? I did, yeah. 44 out of what? I think it's out of... 45 or 46. Wow. It's like 97 point something percent. That is amazing. <laughs> so what did you do? Um, definitely try and be as organized as you can. Um, any like, the, when you're, when you get started, the biggest thing is just be open minded. Try to take any negative experiences you've had about maths in the past. Just put them to one side because it was horrific for me. I remember being at school and being made to feel stupid quite young. And that had a, re- a knock-on effect, like ongoing. I was quite fearful of maths. So put it to one side because the teachers here are amazing and they bring out the best in you. Um, my advice would be like going forward when you're on your course is to definitely spend time doing it private study. Uh, you you just have to like work on your weaknesses like um, when you start getting to do like mock papers when they come back and you've got sort of you've lost a few marks for certain areas definitely have another look over them and see where you can improve so basically learning for your mistakes yeah definitely don't just sort of think oh well I got the others right and I passed don't be like complacent right brilliant well I would like to thank you very much for your time and this uh, amazing testimony so thank you very much Emma okay thank Thank you. you